The Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been laid to rest in Moscow. The fiercest critic of President Vladimir Putin died two weeks ago in a remote Arctic prison. His supporters shouted, Alexei, thank you, as his coffin was brought into the cemetery near the Moskva River. Earlier, thousands gathered outside the church where his funeral was held in defiance of riot police and official warnings from the Kremlin. One human rights group says at least 45 people were arrested at tribute events. Navalny's wife, Yulia Navalnaya, thanked him on social media for 26 years of happiness. And I'm joined now by our Russia analyst, Konstantin Egat. Konstantin, the Kremlin didn't want this funeral to take place the way it did. They tried to force Navalny's mother to have a secret burial. Were you surprised to see them allow thousands of people bid him farewell in the capital in Moscow? Well, Nicole, what could they do? Uh, in the end, it's a funeral. And uh, basically, the fact that several dozen people were arrested, according to human right, rights groups, already shows that uh, this was not your regular funeral. Uh, of course, they didn't want this show of solidarity with Alexei and his family. And uh, of course, uh, they got what they got. I mean, it's Moscow. It's Navalny's heartland. It's where people uh, are the most politicized and where there is a huge uh, well, at least a significant, let's say, uh, layer of opposition to Putin. So to me, there was no surprise in the turnout. And uh, frankly speaking, these people are brave because anyone who went there could have risked, uh, risked arrest on a completely trumped up on fake charges. So yes, I mean, kudos to, the, kudos to them all. Mm -hmm. To people outside Russia, Navalny was the face of the anti-Putin opposition. How symbolic a figure is he among the Russian public? Well, look, the Russian public uh, that was anti-Putin and still continues to be this minority, uh, they, of course, knew about Navalny. Not everyone agreed with him. There were other leaders of opposition, including in exile. Uh, but uh, definitely the fact that he was in Russia attracted uh, huge attention to him. And uh, he was one of the, I would say, top two, three political prisoners uh, that were in Putin's hands. So in a sense, I think uh, those who uh, dislike Putin, they always acknowledged his bravery. Uh, but of course, there is a wide swathe of public opinion in Russia, which believes the Kremlin propaganda and uh, believes that Navalny was the CIA agent or whatever the Kremlin uh, tells about him. So alas, not everyone in Russia was uh, taken by his energy and his messages. Now, Navalny's widow lives outside Russia and didn't attend the funeral today. She has vowed to continue her husband's fight. What role do you think she could play going forward? Well, it depends on uh, how she proceeds. Uh, she's a different person. She kept always slightly sort of in the shadow of Alexei. And uh, she has to become uh, her own her own self, her own political self. Uh, I think that what we've seen so far uh, points to the fact that Alexei, whom I happen to know personally too, was correct to say that she's probably more radical than he is in opposition to Putin. Uh, but of course, it means that she will have to recreate his team to boost it, to find her own messages and her own image. And that is a big task for her. If she succeeds, then I'm absolutely certain she'll pose uh, a danger to Putin, even from, uh, from the outside, even from exile. That was Konstantin Egad. Always a pleasure to get your insights. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nicole. Um, we're joined now, as you can see, by Ekaterina Shulman. She is joining us from the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center. And we'd like to get more on that with you, Ekaterina. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, first of all. Um, you know, we've heard from Navalny vowing to continue his fight, taking steps to that end. She's living outside Russia and she wasn't at the funeral today. What role do you see her potentially playing now going forward? Of course, she can serve as a kind of unifying figure because she has a recognizable name, a rather striking public presence, a certain gift of words. Uh, she was not in the public eye when Alexei was alive, but to those few who knew the pair, uh, it was evident that sometimes she was the more radical one of the two.
So now that she began, for example, now speaking out on social media in earnest, that has become uh, evident. But at the same time, of course, political leadership takes much more than that. And it is not easy to inherit political capital with the name. But recognizability, moral authority, and, well, a bravery and willingness to go on, that counts for much. You know Russia well, and I'd just like to ask you about the images that we're seeing coming out of Moscow today. Tell us more about what the Kremlin is and is not allowing to take place today, this day of Alexei Navalny's funeral. What level of of obstruction from the Kremlin have we been witnessing? It is, I think, uh, characteristic to compare this funeral with the funeral of uh, Yevgeny Pegorin that took place in August last year. At that time, Kremlin was also afraid of uh, his supporters because he was uh, well known and uh, in some circles a rather popular figure. And unlike the uh, liberal social strata, uh, Prigozhin's people were also armed. So there was every reason to expect some sort of inquietude, to put it mildly, but uh, it appeared that it was extremely easy to convince both the family and the near circle that uh, a quiet funeral will be more to their advantage. What's more, there was this little game that Kremlin loves to play when they announce one place as as the uh, cemetery where somebody will be buried and then the body is carried to another place, etc. So with all the highly uh, militarized um, image and, well, the the, the reality uh, of Prigozhin and his supporters, it was all quieted down with the extreme ease. So evidently there was an idea to do the same thing with Navalny's family to convince them that a quiet funeral with only a few relatives present would be best to the best of their interest. But this didn't play out like that. Uh, The authorities obstructed the funeral as far as they could. First, it was impossible to find a cemetery, a place cemetery. Then it was impossible to find a uh, public halls anywhere in Moscow where people could say goodbye to, to Alexei Navalny. Then there were difficulties with the priests, there were difficulties with the cars, with absolutely everything. Right now in Moscow, the uh, cemetery is going to be closed because it will be 5 p.m. Uh, Moscow time when the, the gates are closing and they are not letting the people to put flowers on the grave. So they're doing everything they can to make this whole problem kind of disappear because the authorities are facing the situation when they've done away with a okay. person, but not with the problem that person represented for, for them. Thousands of people came to the outskirts of Moscow to pay their respects to the departed politician. And this picture, or rather those pictures, will not go away. They will stay in the people's memory. Thank you so much, Ekaterina Shulman from the Carnegie Center. We appreciate it.